Today, I'm going to attempt to save your Facebook ad account and in the process, save you thousands of dollars in wasted spend and most importantly, tens of hours per week of wasted time. All right, we are skipping the intro today and we're gonna jump right into it. If you're still using multiple campaigns and trying to media buy your way to success in your Facebook ad account, this video is about to change your entire life. Because believe it or not, media buying inside of Facebook is the easiest it has probably ever been. And if you just trust the platform, I can almost guarantee that you're going to see more success in your ad account. Now, full disclosure, strategy I'm about to show you is not our strategy. It's actually from a guy by the name of Charlie, and he is an absolute legend, and I highly recommend checking him out. But what I want to try to do in this video is break down our understanding of it at the agency and how we use it across all of our client accounts to make sure we're scaling optimally and getting the most out of our Facebook ads. First thing that I need to address, you are not smarter than the machine. My amazing editors are going to pull up some photos of Facebook's data centers. If you think you're smarter than all those computers, you should probably click off this video. I'll jump to the reason why I say that is because the strategy I'm about to show you leverages all of that data that Facebook has. I know it's super creepy that Facebook basically knows every single thing about all of us, but if you're a marketer, you need to leverage that data and leverage that information rather than trying to fight. So with that said, I'm going to jump at the screen and actually show you exactly how to build out this campaign. And then as I build it out, explain further why it's actually better for your overall success. All right. So as you can see, we are inside of the ad account. And the first thing that I'm going to address is is that this is going to be the only campaign that you run inside of your ad account. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I know that might sound crazy, but just trust me. This super campaign is not only going to find you new customers, it's also going to retarget for you. It's also going to be your middle of funnel, and it's also going to target people that have already purchased from you. The only time you should be running more than one campaign is based on your business objective. So if you're going to be scaling into different countries, or for example, you want to scale a different product, which is something that's definitely up for a discussion, but to keep it simple, just focus on your single campaign that is going to do all the acquisition for you. Now, the next thing that we need to look at is the total budget. Whatever you want to spend on Facebook ads, you are going to put inside of your CBO budget. Now, the reason why we use CBO is because again, we are trusting the computers and we're going to let Facebook actually decide where it wants to spend our money. Now, if you're not sure on how to set up a CBO, you basically just click the create campaign. Always make sure you're going for purchase conversions. As in this scenario, I'm talking to everybody that is in e-commerce or it's actually called sales now. And what you're going to to do is you're going to turn on advantage campaign budget and whatever your daily budget is, whether it's hundred dollars a day or $10,000 a day, this is going to be where you control the entire budget of your ad account. And that is it. And yes, I just updated this to CBO. As we jump into the ad set section, this is where things are going to get a little bit more advanced. If you are starting from scratch, you are only going to be using dynamic creative testing ad sets. So if you don't know what that means, that means you're going to set up a dynamic creative test ad set. So again, just create an ad set and make sure, as you can see here, it is fully broad. No targeting, absolutely nothing. Just leave it as it is. The only thing if you want to play with it is you can try male versus female. But honestly, I would recommend just leaving this fully wide open. Hey guys, it's Spencer here from the future. I just wanted to jump in to fully clarify what going broad actually means. Because the thing is, everybody nowadays is saying, just go broad and don't worry about it. But the truth is, is by going broad, you're not shotgunning your ads into millions and millions of people. What you're actually doing is just giving Facebook the opportunity to do the targeting for you. How Facebook actually targets users is not done on the ad set level. It's done on the ad level. What I mean by this is whatever kind of ad copy or whatever kind of video or image you give to Facebook, that's what it uses as its target. Facebook will fully transcribe your videos, will actually look at who's in the video, whether it's a male or a female, and can actually read the emotion of whoever is speaking in that video. It does the same thing for your static ads and does the same thing for any other type of ad that you run. If you've ever had ads rejected by Facebook, then you already understand that Facebook can fully analyze your creatives. So again, just to emphasize the point, going broad does not mean just throwing a Hail Mary and hoping for the best. It means you're giving Facebook the freedom to actually do its job, which at the end of the day is gonna lead to a lower CPM and allow you to focus on what actually matters, which is better creatives. Now let's jump back in. You're going to call this DCT, whatever number it is. So because this is the first one, we're calling this DCG number one. We're then going to make sure dynamic creative is turned on and that the placements is the advantage plus. Once you've set that up, you are done on the ad set level. Now, if you have existing ads that are already performing, say you're running them in an ABO at $100 or $500 a day in spend, or you have another C 
TBL, that's doing well, and you have some previous winners that are inside the account, then you're going to open up what we call the champions campaign. And as you guessed it, it is fully broad. Rather than doing a dynamic creative, you're actually going to turn this off. And what you're going to do is simply use the post ID from any of your previous winning ads as that ads inside of this campaign. One of the main reasons why we use post IDs is to make sure that we're building engagement on our ads. But most importantly, this is crucial for the following steps that I'm about to show you. But with that said, if you don't have any winning ads, then obviously you can't run a champions campaign because you need to go find your winning ads. So the only other rule of thumb that I need to mention here is that inside of this campaign, you should never have more than three total ad sets running at once. The absolute most amount of ad sets you should have in this campaign is one champions ad set and two dynamic creative ad sets. And that is it for the ad set level. Now, as I already showed you in the champions ad set, you're going to have all of your best performing ads using the post IDs. But for the dynamic creative tests, we're going to follow Charlie's method of what is considered the 322 method. And inside of your DCT ad set, when you're creating the ad, as the name suggests, you are going to add three creatives, two primary text, and two headlines. That is it. Obviously, make sure you have a URL in place. And of course, make sure you're using Triple Whale and you've got your Triple Whale URL parameters in there as well. And when it comes to the creatives, as you can see, this is something that is pretty strategic that we like to do at our agency and we'd highly recommend doing the same. If you have a certain style of ad that you want to test, essentially in this dynamic creative test, we want to be testing variations of a single concept. So for example, all of these ads have the fact that they are a graph in common, but where they change is for example, in the title here, it says your sales. And in this one, it says your return on ad spend. And on this one up here, it says conversion rate. So although all of these creatives are different, they all follow some kind of general concept and some kind of general idea. The reason why we like to do that, because that allows us to test a certain creative strategy and give it the most amount of legs essentially to actually perform inside of the account. If you're testing wildly different videos and images inside of your dynamic creative test, that can work. But ideally, you want to be testing variations of a creative concept as your three visual components in your DCT. And also make sure you turn off optimized creative for each person. So now once you've done that, you are fully done. That is the entire setup. It is one campaign. Again, if you have winning ads, you can start your champions campaign, which is just a broad ad set with all of your best performing ads in there as post IDs. And then of course, if you don't have any, then you're going to set up two dynamic creative tests. So for example, what I would do here is I would duplicate this and I would call it DCT number two, and I would put in three variations of creatives, the two headlines and the two copies. Now to dive into live example of how this actually works, here is a great example inside one of our client accounts where you can see week over week how the DCT strategy is actually going to improve your ad results and help you spend your budget better. The idea of having to crank budget to test more creatives is now no longer a thing. We test creatives by giving them to Facebook and putting them inside of a dynamic creative test and letting Facebook tell us whether or not that new creative that we put inside of the ad set is actually worthy of spend. So as you can see here, during the week of May 21st to May 27th, we had launched a new DCT. And inside of here, we were seeing some really, really good results. Compared to the champions ad set, we were actually getting a 4.94 return on ad spend compared to a 1.01 return on ad spend. So if this happens when you launch your DCT, what Facebook is telling you is that it is going to start spending more on this new creative that you've put in as it believes not only is it more scalable, but it is also going to deliver a better return on ad spend. So from that point, what you're going to do is you're actually going to jump into the ad level and you're going to start to figure out based off of the breakdowns, what the new winning combo is that Facebook is really like. So all you need to do is go to breakdown, go to image and video, and what you'll see is the actual spend split. So right now, based off of where Facebook has put spend, you can see that this ad right here is actually converting at a 13.65 X return on ad spend, which is obviously a lot better than the other ad set that we were running. So what you need to do is take note of this specific creative. And then what you need to do is go back and break it down by text. And as you can see, there's also going to be a certain text that performs better. And then the final element that you need to go and look at is the headline. And again, you're gonna see a split of a headline that is performing better. You've now just successfully run your first dynamic creative test and figured out which visual is gonna convert best, which headline is gonna convert best, and which body text is gonna convert best. What you then need to do is go into page posts and find that exact combination, which if you need tutorial on that, please drop a comment down below. But in the meantime, just feel free to search YouTube and find how to find post IDs. And you're then going to take that winning post and as you 
you can imagine, drop it into the winning scaling campaign. And now by doing that, if we actually jump ahead to the next week, you can see that our account as a whole actually improved on the winner's ad set and we were actually able to spend more money. If we actually jump in and take a look at the winner's ad set, you can see this new winning combination has been injected. It is starting to get more spend and it's starting to produce a higher ROAS, which is essentially what everybody wants. So to summarize what exactly this strategy is doing and why it works so much better is because number one, you don't have to spend more to test more creatives. By running this CBO method, Facebook is only going to spend money on creatives that it believes are actually going to convert. To show you a real example, this is one of our clients that we launched a DCT for. And during last week, out of the total $800 worth of budget that we spent, this DCT only got 33 cents. And the reason why is because Facebook doesn't think it's more scalable than the current winning ad that we have. So if you were to use traditional methods, you essentially would have had to spend a hundred to sometimes even 200, $300, depending on your CPA to get the data that, oh, wow, this is actually not going to convert better. Whereas with this method, we did have to spend for us to know this ad set right here isn't going to beat out our current winners. So we essentially just saved hundreds of dollars by not forcing spend on this ad and trusting the data that Facebook has. And as you can imagine, that is also way better for the overall success of your ads, as if you're creating ads that are actually worthy of getting spend from Facebook and from your main CBO, then that's a good ad. But if the ads that you're creating are not getting spend, you need to make better ads. And now just as a final point to wrap this up, if you haven't noticed, this strategy is incredibly simple. And the reason why we love this strategy so much is because it can take us out of the ad account and have us focusing more on the stuff that actually matters. In case you forgot, Facebook and Instagram are visual first platforms, which means the single most important thing that you can do is test more creatives and test more visuals to actually improve performance. If you're spending hours inside of your ad account every single week trying to media buy hack your way and you know beat the computer, you're doing a disservice to your business. What you should be focusing hours a week on is your creative, your offer, your landing pages, and building a product that people actually want. By using this strategy, it not only helps unlock a new level of scalability as you are running fully broad and you're only spending budget on what is worthy of actually getting it, this Facebook ad strategy is going to be the key for you to cleaning up your ad account and driving more sales with your Facebook ads. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing as I release weekly videos talking about high level strategies for Shopify brands. And if you run a multiple six or seven figure Shopify brand and are looking for the help of a growth focused agency, make sure you grab a tab with me down below as we will give you a custom action plan and can actually impact implement this strategy for you. With that said, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much again for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you next week.